Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today is part two of our European Coffee Roaster tier list. A quick reminder on how this tier list works. We have 25 European coffee roasters, and we're ranking them on a tier list scale. With yesterday's video featuring coffee roasters 1 through 12, today's video featuring coffee roasters 13 through 25 alphabetically, we have six categories for these coffee roasters, and at the top is world class, followed by amazing, great, good, okay, and not my cup. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off with our next coffee roaster, which is Cafe Raven, based out of Gothenburg, Sweden. And they're a coffee roaster I do have limited familiarity with, as the only time I've tried them has been during Cafe Box's advent calendars. And the last coffee I do remember having from them was a wash processed Kenyan, which was very much in line with the expectations for a lot of wash processed Kenyans in general. So for the most part, the majority of their coffees I've had have been okay, and I think I would have a better assessment of them as a whole if I had an opportunity to review one of their full bags of coffee. However, they're not necessarily the most easily accessible coffee roaster in the United States, as I've never seen any multi-roaster carrying them. So for the time being, given that my experiences have been mostly okay, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the OK category. Next up, we have Kawa, which is based out of Paris, France, and our only French coffee roaster on this tier list. And they're an interesting coffee roaster, as one of the first coffees I ever had from them was a mosto processed Ethiopian coffee that I very much enjoyed. It's actually one of my favorite Ethiopian coffees that we had through the entirety of last year. But in addition to that, they do have some very weird coffees, as I did have one of their Pariso coffees that I didn't necessarily enjoy. In addition to that, I had a natural processed Kenyan coffee that I also didn't necessarily enjoy. They do offer a pretty wide range of both uh, standard coffees as well as experimental coffees, but for the most part, I've kind of linked on their experimental coffees, and I haven't seen as many multi-roasters carrying them since, but they're a coffee roaster that I would like to go back and revisit, given that I did have one extremely positive experience with them, even if the other experiences haven't been quite as good. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in the good category for right now. Kind of a mixed bag on this one. Next up, we have Kopi Coffee, which is based out of Helsingborg, Sweden. And they're a coffee roaster that has actually appeared quite a bit on this channel. We've done a number of full bag reviews of their coffee. And I'm going to start out with the negative. And one of the negatives I had with this coffee roaster going into them for the longest time was a lot of their coffees can come out really tame. The majority of the coffees I had from them up to a certain point was wash processed coffees. And they were just so light and delicate that I wasn't able to get a whole lot from them. And it made for very interesting reviews, given that they had some pretty detailed descriptors, but I always had a hard time kind of getting those descriptors from those coffees. Since then, they've started to go a little bit more on the natural side of things, as I've seen so many more natural processed coffees offered from Kopi. But in addition to that, there is one coffee that I did have from them that I was really impressed by. It was their Dilgi Chabesa, which turned out to be one of my favorite coffees from a couple years ago at this point. But it was a coffee that actually gave me such a positive impression of Kopi that I wanted to go back and try a number of their other coffees. And that's where things have gotten kind of weird as some of the coffees I've had have come out a little bit more developed than I think I would have expected given just how light they had been in the past. It's an interesting coffee roaster. I've definitely had a mixed bag and given that I've only ever had one coffee that I was thoroughly impressed by, the vast majority have been kind of on the more tame side. For right now, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the okay category. They're a coffee roaster I'll definitely revisit, mostly because they're easily accessible to me and they do offer a majority of wash processed coffees. All right, next up we have La Cabra, which I suppose now is technically based out of Copenhagen, Denmark. Once upon a time, they listed Aarhus as their location. But uh, they're a coffee roaster that's an interesting one. For the most part on this channel, we've reviewed wash processed coffees of theirs. They have also featured in a, one of the Cafe Box advent calendars, and it didn't necessarily have the best impression of me in that advent calendar. That was the one during the blind taste test ranking advent calendar. And for the most part, it finished kind of in the middle of the pack or towards the end. And that's unfortunately been my experience with La Cabra. And it's a very interesting experience given that so many people, at least in the past, raved about how impressive La Cabra was. But the vast majority of the coffees I've had from them have been significantly underwhelming. In fact, this is the only coffee roaster on this list that I would say I haven't really enjoyed any of their coffees in the slightest bit. It's been a really tricky thing because I keep going back and hoping and expecting that uh, things will be different the next time I try one. Best coffee I had was a wash processed Colombian coffee from, it was a Diego Bermudez coffee too. And it was just fine. And that's been the problem I've continued to have with La Cabra for a very long time. 
I've heard that they've started to roast a little lighter because one of the issues I had with them was they seemed to go a little bit more developed than I think I would have expected. At one point, I would say that they were one of the most developed coffee roasters on this tier list. There's one more on here that's pretty developed, but relative to a lot of the other things on here, they definitely had a little bit more development to them. I do hope they go back to a little bit more light of a profile and I will revisit them at some point because they are a very big, popular, and well-known coffee roaster. But for me, honestly, they're one of my least favorite coffee roasters on this entire tier list. So I do have to put them in the not my cup category. I don't know if that's a controversial pick given the feedback I've had from people on this coffee roaster. It's been pretty in line with my experiences as well. So I'm comfortable leaving them there. Let me know what you guys think on that one. Next up, we have Langora Cafe, which is based out of Stordal, Norway. And they're also interesting, mostly due to the fact that the majority of the coffees I have had from them have been on the experimental process side of things. And like a couple of other coffee roasters on this list, I'm thinking of Jakku. When I have their standard wash processed coffees, I really enjoy them. And that's why I wish I had an opportunity to try more of their wash processed coffees. But often when I go to a store and I find their coffee, it is a lot of the more experimental things. They've had some anaerobic Rwandan coffees, which are weird and interesting. And uh, we did review one last year. I can't remember the exact, um, do I have it listed on here? I don't have it listed on here, the exact uh, origin on it. But that one came out so like tame for an anaerobic coffee. And I really didn't know what to expect of it or make of that coffee in general. There are some really positive coffees that come from them, and that's why I'm thinking most specifically the Halo when I think back on it, but I really hope that I get an opportunity to try maybe a lot more of their standard coffees. They really tend to lean heavy into the more experimental ones, so there's a lot of positive to take away from this, and I'm going to kind of bump them up. They're somewhere in between the good and great category for me, but I'm going to be generous, put them in the great category, given that that halo is really nice, and even some of their experimental things have been on the better side of experimental coffees. All right, next up we have uh, Manhattan Coffee Roasters, which is based out of Rotterdam, Netherlands, and I've been thinking about what I'm going to say about this coffee roaster from the first moment I ever tried them, because I'm sure a lot of people have been dying to hear my thoughts specifically on this coffee roaster. And I'm going to start with this because this needs to be said, they're not perfect. And they might be the coffee roaster we review the most on this channel at this point. And I will say this, a lot of the selection that they do have is coffees that I wouldn't necessarily purchase. At the time of recording this video, they actually dropped three anaerobic uh, processed Brazilian coffees that I have little to no interest in. And that's kind of Manhattan in a nutshell is you look through their list and you go, these are coffees I'm very interested in. These are coffees I'm not interested in. And that has its pros and cons because that way it kind of caters to everybody. But I'm saying from my end of things, there are a handful of coffees from Manhattan that I know I won't like. In fact, there are a number of Manhattan coffees that we have reviewed on this channel that I didn't like go whatsoever. And that being said, there are a lot of positives that are taken away from this coffee roaster. And given that they have finished first place in all of our top 10 coffees of the year list, they had the Chantouine, they had the uh, Letty Bermudez, and then they had the Pepe Yihan. Obviously, there's something to this coffee roaster that does make them very special. And they are one of the more transcendent coffee roasters. And the positives do have to be highlighted, most notably and distinctly the Bermudez line of coffees, which started with Diego Bermudez, which in itself was a transcendent coffee. But then Letty Bermudez is arguably the most discussed coffee of the last several years. So much so that a lot of coffee roasters have tried to bring it in themselves and market that coffee too, because they know just how special that one is. Complement that with the Luna Bermudez and a number of coffees that they have also released from their standard offerings. But that's what I really wanted to hammer home with this coffee roaster and what makes them really special is some of their standard offerings really set them apart. And in order to get into that world-class category, you need to have your standard offerings be every bit as good as some of your higher-end offerings. And that's been the case with Manhattan, as I'm thinking of two specifically, the Kian Jege, as well as the Chantouin, which turned out to be two of my favorite coffees that I have ever had, and those were both two of Manhattan's standard offerings. So with the negative comes all of this positive, and I think everybody knows where this one's going as it is in the world-class category. You can't finish first place three years in a row and not be a world-class coffee roaster. I am really impressed with some of the innovative coffees that they are releasing. Manhattan is absolutely a world-class coffee roaster. Next up, we have uh, Morgan, which is based out of uh, Gothenburg, Sweden. And I have some interesting thoughts on them in general as the joke with me is 
I've never met a coffee roaster that has such a special ability as Morgan. They are able to make every single coffee I've ever tried to taste like a Kenyan coffee. As the first coffee I ever tried from them was the Yobani Ramos, which very much tastes like a Kenyan coffee. We also reviewed a uh, Costa Rican Gesha, which weirdly reminded me of a Kenyan coffee, and their Ethiopian coffees have very Kenyan profiles, and their Kenyan coffees definitely taste like Kenyan coffees. So as somebody that's not necessarily a Kenyan traditionalist, it doesn't necessarily come off as my sort of coffee roaster to begin with. However, I still found some positives from the coffees that I have had. They haven't necessarily been underwhelming to me. They've been just a little bit more vibrant and skewed in a direction that isn't necessarily my preference. You do have a coffee that I very much want to get my hands on, hoping that will happen in the near future. It is a Kenyan coffee, but we're going to kind of split the difference. I'm going to put them in the good category, given that the experiences have definitely been better than some of the experiences I've had in the okay category. Next up, we have Nomad, which is another interesting one. I can discuss so much about so many of these coffee roasters. Nomad is another one, as we have reviewed a couple of their coffees, uh, one unofficially, which was their Red Plum, and then we had an Ethiopian as well as a Rwandan coffee. And I'm going to completely omit and ignore the experience with the Rwandan coffee for anybody that's not watched that video. It had the potato defect, and it created a very tricky and difficult to consume and review coffee. I was a little bit underwhelmed by their Ethiopian coffee as well. With that being said, I really enjoyed their Red Plum, which is a very nice coffee, and any coffee roaster that does have it, I have enjoyed their version of that coffee as well. And in addition to that, their other higher-end offering, I did have their Tipica Mejorada when they released it as well. I had it in a single cup form, and I was really impressed by that one as well. So I found myself to be impressed by a lot of their higher-end offerings. Uh, Pink Lotso turned out to be a little better than I was expecting too, so I have a fair bit of experience with them. Their standard offerings for me have been a little underwhelming, while their higher-end offerings have been where I've really enjoyed them. You kind of have to work your way up to the higher-end offerings, though, in my opinion. I have to enjoy your standard offerings in order to get myself to spend the money on your higher-end offerings. So it's kind of tricky. I, I can kind of see them in a number of places, for ranging from okay to great. So once again, I'll kind of split the difference. I'm going to put them in the good category. I've heard that a local coffee shop might start carrying them again soon. If that's the case, I definitely want to go back and try a lot more of their coffees. As I've heard from some people I have a lot of respect for that Nomad is one of the best coffee roasters in the world. It just hasn't been my experience yet. Higher end offerings though, very nice. Next up we have Red Bank, which I think I have two places listed here, Kendall and uh, Lake District, England, because those are the two places we went. I'm not entirely sure what they identify as their location, but yeah, they're based out of England, the only English coffee roaster we have on here, and that's because we actually did review two of their coffees on this channel, and very much a mixed bag, but not necessarily in the good way. I had such positive expectations for the honey processed Mexican Gesha that we reviewed. It was a very interesting and unique coffee that was featured in a box set that we had purchased. And then in addition to that, we had a singular, I want to say it was an anaerobic coffee that looking back on it, it wasn't quite as good as I think I was in that review saying. So they're very English. The experience was very English. That typically tends not to be my type of coffee. This one might be the most developed coffee roaster on this scale. And I think for that reason, it's not necessarily in line with my profile. I would be curious to try more of their coffees. In general, I do want to try more English coffee. For whatever reason, they're probably the hardest country to get coffees from here in the United States. So I'm going to put them in the not my cup category. That's subject to change. I think that they might be better than that, but my two experiences have been moderate to lukewarm in general. Next up, we have Supreme Roast Works, which is based out of Oslo, Norway. And uh, this is another coffee roaster that my entire experience has been from Cafe Box's advent calendars. And it's been a little bit of an unfortunate experience because the first time I ever had them, I looked through their offerings and I saw a number of coffees that sounded really interesting to me. It was unfortunate that the only thing that they sent were non-washed coffees. And that's been the issue I've had with them is everything that they have sent have been non-washed coffees on the more heavily processed side of things, a lot of naturals, anaerobic naturals. And that's not my type of coffee in general. I haven't enjoyed any of those coffees. And I believe that they were part of the blind taste test rankings cafe box series where I did place them towards the end. And a lot of that was because they were submitting coffees that again, weren't necessarily my profile up to this point given that everything I've had has been much more heavily processed coffees that aren't my type of coffee. I do have to put them in the not my cup category. 
I really wish I could try some of their washed coffees, some of their more standard coffees, but given that's my only experience with them, that's kind of where I have to place them. All right, three more coffee roasters. Next up, we have TaylorMade, which is also based out of Oslo, Norway. And TaylorMade is a fun one. I like to joke that TaylorMade has three types of coffees, washed, non-washed, and weird. As we have reviewed their, I wanna say it was a cheese and crackers coffee on this channel. They've also had a very interesting line of anaerobic Indonesian coffees that they labeled Purple Rain. And then they've had some like tomato basil coffees. I can't remember, I think it was like Caprese coffees. Interesting coffees nonetheless. But uh, their wash processed Honduran coffee that we reviewed, something that they identified as more medium to dark on their scale, turned out to be a very nice coffee. My favorite coffee that we've reviewed from them. Ethiopia natural processed had a little bit more of a mixed review to it, given the uh, lack of clarity, a little bit more of a grainy quality. Their donuts really captivate me. I really want to go to their cafe and try all of the donuts that they do have and all of the coffee as well. They're a very interesting coffee roaster. Their branding's beautiful. I really like their boxes. Pretty mixed experience overall, but I still think that they're a quality coffee roaster and I will definitely try a lot more of their coffees in the future. I'm gonna put them in the good category. I do have a lot of positives to say about them in general. All right, we have saved two of the biggest names, if not the biggest names in this entire tier list for last. So next up we have The Barn and they're based out of Berlin, Germany. The only German coffee roaster we have on this tier list. And I could probably talk a very long time about them as I'm gonna start with the positives. And the first positive I wanna say is their wash processed coffees, I think, are just about as objectively well-structured as I think I've had from any coffee roaster on this list. I'm most notably thinking of the Obrahe, the Colombian Gesha that we had reviewed on this channel, which looking back on it, it's aging really well. I'm thinking about how many coffees have similar profiles that didn't turn out quite as good as that coffee did. In addition to that, their uh, La Colina, their Guatemala, was one of the best Guatemalan coffees I've ever reviewed on this channel. Really impressed by that one as well. The Ethiopians we've reviewed, wonderful. And now here's where we're going to kind of flip over to the negative side of things. <clears throat> I haven't enjoyed their natural processed coffees or any of their anaerobic coffees, and that's pretty much in line with a lot of the other coffee roasters on here, but I think that would kind of round out the entire positive experience of a coffee roaster if those were just as good. So we're looking at the positives that their higher end offerings are pretty good, their standard washed coffees are good, and even if the naturals aren't necessarily my favorite, that shouldn't necessarily take away from them. <clears throat> I think the one problem I have is I have had some issues with the barn and trying to get some coffees from the barn. And it was very unfortunate and it left me in a bad situation. I really don't want to elaborate on it because things happen and it does have to take away because it could have really pushed them over the edge given just how much I was enjoying their higher end offerings. So I could honestly place them from anywhere in the low end of that world-class category to the amazing to the great category and that would be bumping them down significantly for my experiences as well as with the natural processed coffee. So once again, we're splitting the differences and I'm just going to put them in the amazing category. I'm probably not going to be reviewing them anytime soon. So we'll just leave it at that. Last coffee roaster to discuss, and uh, a lot of people are gonna be interested in this one. It is uh, Tim Wendelbo, based out of uh, Oslo, Norway. And we don't have too, too many Tim Wendelbo reviews on this channel, I wanna say just uh, three full bag reviews or so. But we have a couple of uh, Cafe Box Advent Calendar samples that we have also reviewed on this channel. And here's one thing I wanna point out before we get right into Tim Wendelbo. If you look at the five coffee roasters we have either in the world-class or amazing category. None of them are luring coffee roasters. So uh, the Cafe Circular, I wanna say, is the Genio. We have a couple of Probat coffee roasters in Manhattan and Kaffa, as well as the Barn. And then Fathers uses the Diedrich. So there are no luring coffee roasters in the top of my tier list. And I've said before, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of coffees that come from the luring. And Tim Wendelbo right here is a luring coffee roaster. In addition to that, Tim Wendelbo does tend to go with coffees that are also not my profile of coffees as he likes a lot more of his uh, Kenyan coffees, his Honduran coffees, his El Salvadorian coffees, his much more herbal coffees in general. So those are the two things I'm kind of taking away from this right at the start is Tim Wendelbo has much more herbal and not my type of coffees roasted on a coffee roaster that is not necessarily my preference. So logic would say they're not gonna be a coffee roaster I enjoy. That being said, I have a lot of positives as well. First positive is almost every coffee I've had from them has exceeded my expectations. 
going into the Kenyans knowing that I wasn't necessarily going to like them as much, they turned out better than I expected. Natural processed Ethiopian coffee that we reviewed last year ended up on our top 10 coffees of the year list. Exceptional natural processed coffee, very clean. The uh, Caballero Gesha, which we reviewed a couple of years ago, I enjoyed more than the one we reviewed already this year, but it was also a really nice coffee, also finished on our top 10 coffees of the year list. So it does go to show that a coffee roaster can overachieve with coffees that aren't necessarily my preference to begin with. That's why Tim Wendelbo is special because he has done an amazing job getting somebody like myself to enjoy coffees that aren't necessarily my type of profile to begin with. That also does kind of leave a little bit of a cap as to how high I can rank a coffee roaster because they're not my type of coffees, we'll be completely honest. So for that reason, the best place I can put them is in the amazing category, which I think is a real credit to Tim Wendelbo because having a coffee roaster that roasts on a Loring finish that high, it's just a testament to how good Tim Wendelbo is as a whole. But I'm gonna take one quick glance at this tier list. I think everything's pretty much where it should be. I very much agree with this list. Obviously things are subject to change in the future. And I would also love to hear back from you guys. What are your thoughts on this tier list? What is not in the correct place? What is something you strongly agree with, strongly disagree with? I would love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions on this because this is very much a subjective list. I go into this saying it's a subjective list and this is all based off of my own personal preferences and opinions and we all have our own personal preferences and opinions. So feel free to let me know what you guys think. But I'm going to leave this tier list at that. As we continue to achieve milestones, we're going to do newer and newer tier lists. So we're probably going to be updating American tier lists, European tier lists. At some point, we're going to get to a, a worldwide tier list. And thinking optimistically, maybe sometime in the future, I'll do a top 10, correction, top 20 of my favorite coffee roasters in the entire world tier list. So that's something that could be worth staying tuned for in the future. I'm going to leave this one at that. As I always say, if you guys are enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been part two of our European coffee roaster tier list. Thank you for watching.